Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah. So, right. I feel that this one is noisy, but I'm very glad to be here and uh, talk to um, you about quantum computing. So first, a few words about me. So I'm a computer security researcher, small uh, consulting uh, firm uh, near Paris. I do a lot of uh, penetration te testing, audits, and research. And my main interests are in security of protocols and in number theory. That is all, all the thing that deals with cryptography, factorization, primality, and, and so on. So, what are the goals of this talk? This is very important to focus on the goals to better understand the next uh, slides. So first, uh, the first goal is to introduce you quantum physics because it's a complex field. Uh, give you a state-of-the-art results in uh, quantum computing and cryptography. Explain you the principle of buildings, uh, gates, and quantum circuits. And at the end, uh, the definitive goal uh, is to give you all the tools and the resources to uh, test quantum computing by yourself and you will see you will have all the resources, the knowledge to test by yourself for free on real quantum hardware. So this is the ultimate uh, goal of this talk. Uh, yeah, just a few words about uh, Cédric Blanchet, a tribute to Cédric Blanchet, a friend who left us last year and was a co-founder of the event. So a tribute for him. And this is the outline, so nine parts. So first we will uh, introduce uh, quantum physics. I will talk to you about quantum gates and circuits, give you a few uh, fundamental quantum algorithms you must understand for the, the rest of the talk. I uh, will talk about attacks on cryptography, so what are, what are the, the main uh, deals with quantum cryptography and quantum computing on cryptography in general. We will see uh, some uh, computing tools to do simulation. Because before experimenting on real hardware, you will have to test your own algorithm. So we have a list of few uh, tools and a small demo. And then the two main topics. So first will be computing on adiabatic quantum computers. This is the first kind of quantum computer you can find. And the second one is a real quantum computer. We will see the difference between the, the two. And then we will conclude with the, the future of cryptography. So what uh, will be impacted by quantum computers in our current cryptography. And we will conclude with challenges for the next future. So first part is the basics. So, what is quantum computing? What is quantum physics at the very beginning? So, uh, in many, many uh, physical experiments, you will see that small particles both behave as, as particles, like objects, physical objects, and waves. So, every time you take an atom, an electron, a photon, it behaves like an object, like a particle, and as a wave. Like in the, the young slide experiment, you will see both uh, behaviors. So this is the first principle, the quantum duality principle. Second principle is the main characteristic of these physical objects are not determined at a given time. The, the physical uh, measures are not determined. This is to say it's not random, it's not fixed. It just, it's not determined. It's the way you will measure the object that will determine the values. Okay? This is called the quantum superposition principle <coughs> or the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The both name you can find in the literature. So principle is when you try to view, to measure this kind of particle, you will fix some uh, physics values or measures. It's just when you observe, when you try to view this kind of particle that you will determine all, this, all these measures, not, uh, not before. Uh, so basically, uh, if we take uh, um, an electron around an atom, 
it's basically at every position all time and it's when you will measure this position that the, the probability of the position will collapse into a fixed position. So just before the measure, it's everywhere around the atom. It's just when you measure the position that the, the probability distribution of the position will be fixed. It's the way you measure that will fix the physical measure. Okay? So there is no, uh, no way to talk about position and speed at small scales. This is the, the thing to remember. This is called the quantum decoherence. So observing something will uh, break the coherence, and it's called the quantum decoherence. Uh, the consequence is cloning a quantum state is not possible. Because if you want to clone, you need to observe it, you need to view something to reproduce it. But viewing something will break the coherence and will fix the measures. So you, you, it's not possible to uh, copy a quantum state. This is called the no cloning theorem. This is, this is not an advantage when you want to compute something. So this is the only drawback. But first three principles will be useful to do quantum computers. Here you have a figure of the probability distribution of uh, the position of an atom across time. So you see the red peak, sometimes it's 100% determined, sometimes it's 50% determined, but all the time it's less than one and a half. It's less than 50-50. And uh, the, the atom can be at many positions at the same time. It's when you will measure that the atom will be at fixed position. Two surprising experiments that were uh, driven recently. So uh, in um, 2008 in uh, Geneva, the, um, a team of scientists observed instant interaction between entangled bits. That is to say, they have created uh, two entangled photons, that is to say correlated photons. They have sen sent them at 18 kilometers apart from the one from the other. And when they try to measure uh, the polarization of a photon, the, the other was fixed instantly at 18 kilometers. They are, they, are, they are created correlated, and their fate is therefore correlated. So when you measure one photon, the other one will be fixed instantly. And perhaps you will answer me that's not possible because of the speed of light and, and so on. That doesn't matter with speed of light, it's, uh, it's instantly. And they have measured that the interaction is faster than 10,000 times the speed of light because it doesn't uh, transport information, so it doesn't violate uh, the relativity principle of Einstein. It's really instant. Uh, that has been verified for, for the case for now. And uh, several interesting experiments. Uh, it was this, uh, this summer, the same uh, team of scientists achieved a 25 kilometer quantum teleportation. That is to say, they have transported the quantum state from a position to another. And it's, uh, it's not instant, this time it's at the speed of light. But uh, they, they manage to uh, copy the quantum states, but as, as it's not possible, they have destroyed the first one and they have recreated the quantum state at another position. So this doesn't violate the quantum principles all the time. An experiment you should know is uh, Schrodinger's cat. Have you heard of that? Yes. Schrodinger's yeah. well known experiment. It's a paradox and only a suit experiment. That means it's not a real experiment. That was uh, designed by uh, Erwin Schrodinger, like uh, 18 year, 18 year, uh, 80 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you, you take a box, you take a cat, you take a bottle of poison, and you take a radioactive source, and you put them in the box. And the deal is to break the bottle of poison when you detect uh, a, radioactive, a radioactive particle. So at this 
this deals with uh, quantum states and very small scale objects, you don't know when a radioactive particle will be emitted, so you don't know when the bottle of poison will be broken, and you don't know when the cat will die. So until you haven't opened the box, the cat is simultaneously dead and alive because you haven't measured anything. So this is only by suit, not a real experiment, because indeed uh, the, there is a, a measure inside the box, and this, this deals not with small scale objects, but with big scale objects. So the quantum decoherence takes place here. So it's not a real experiment. Uh, let's see uh, two kinds of systems that are currently available uh, free commercially. So first, there exists quantum number generator, taking uh, advantage of quantum physics. So there is a, um, a Swiss company called uh, ID Quantic, uh, which uh, have commercial products like quantum number generator. They exist in USB version or in PCI version. And they take part, take part of uh, quantum principles to give you true real randomness from uh, 4 megabits to 16 megabits. And there is even a quantum encryption system. You can just plug and play on your network. And this will give you quantum encryption uh, nearly transparently. So you can connect two different uh, sites, remote sites, using this system up to 100 kilometers. We'll see a, a little bit later how does the uh, quantum occlusion work? So, quantum occlusion uh, doesn't rely on a mass problem like RSA factorization, for instance, but it instead uses uh, QKD, this is quantum key distribution, to exchange a symmetric key of the same size as the message. So, it's a one time pad, and the key is transmitted over optical fiber. This is a quantum channel. And the message is transmitted normally, I mean, uh, over the internet, for, for instance. And uh, the principle is, if somebody, some attacker tries to uh, get the key, that is to say to uh, measure the photon polarization over the optical fiber, the attacker will destroy half of the photon. So he will not only destroy the key, or half of the key, but uh, the recipient will be able to see that somebody is trying to uh, view the key or to measure the key using quantum error code. So this is unbreakable uh, cryptography that is currently working. I mean, there are uh, quantum key distribution systems working uh, every day in Geneva, Vienna, Massachusetts, and Tokyo, uh, mainly for banking and academic purposes. And they work at a distance of about 100 kilometers, not, uh, not more far because of, uh, of decoherence. And you cannot, of course, copy or amplify the, the signal because of the quantum principles. So for now, it's that kind of distance. So the question we can ask is uh, how many times a system remains in a quantum state? This is useful for quantum cube computing. So there are various times, and uh, searchers are trying to get the, the largest coherence time. Oh, that is to say, the largest time while they are able to manipulate the, the qubits to do computing. So the, the longest time is the silicon nuclear spin that can last as far as 25 seconds. That was for the intro. So now let's talk about quantum gates. So these are the basic blocks for building a quantum computer. Like logic gates, you already know. Like an AND gate, an OR gate, a XOR gate, a NAND gate in, uh, in electronics. So first, uh, uh, let's define what is a qubit. A qubit is a quantum bit, so like a bit in uh, the quantum world. Uh, there are fixed qubits like 0 and 1. They are called cat 0 and cat 1, and this is the notation. They form a two dimension basis. 
that is to say we can define them as vectors in 2D. And an arbitrary qubit is a superposition of the two bases. So we can write it as an arbitrary uh, vector of dimension two. But when you measure it, uh, you need to uh, have complementary probabilities. So uh, the square of alpha plus the square of uh, beta equals one. And alpha and beta are complex numbers. And you can combine qubits uh, using a tensor product. So if you take the tensor product of two qubits, you will have a larger vector, which is the, the system of many qubits. Right. And usually the first qubit uh, is the less significant qubit, the LSQ, of the quantum register. So the qubit near the, the vertical bar is the less significant qubit. And we can also see the qubit as a vector in a 3D sphere with a 3D coordinates. This is another uh, view of the qubit. This is exactly the same because it will be in real coordinates, so three real coordinates or two complex numbers in the state. So basics of gates. For the thermodynamics reasons, you have to know that a quantum gate must be reversible entirely. So you cannot have a hand gate for example, it's not possible because the uh, handwork won't be reversible. If the result of a, of a end gate is false, you cannot determine what were the inputs. If it was false and true, if it was false and false and so on. So it follows that any quantum gate has the same number of inputs and outputs for this reversibility. And the uh, end quantum gate will be represented by uh, 2 to the nth power times 2 to the nth power unitary matrix. <laughs> because of the, the tensor product. And you can simply apply a, a quantum gate to a qubit by multiplying uh, the, the matrix operator by the qubit vector. Uh, the matrix will be on the left part of the multiplication. And in theory, uh, a quantum gate doesn't use any energy for thermodynamic reason and doesn't give off any heat. So it's very uh, ecologic. First kind of, uh, of gate you can find, this is the, the most common. This is the poly X gate, and it's a knot. It's simply a knot uh, applied to the, the qubit wall. So the X gates only negates the qubit. Okay. So if you apply it two times, you have the same qubit at the end, and the operator matrix is this one. The symbol will be simply the X in a rectangle. And it takes only one qubit as input. It just, if you, if you see the, the qubit uh, in a sphere, it just rotates the qubit on the, the x axis by pi radians. Okay? So we have the same kind of gates for the y axis and the z axis. It's simply a rotation by pi radians every time. The matrix are a bit different, but the same principle. Another useful gate is the Adamar gate, and this is one of the most useful gates. It's the H gate. And it simply mixes a qubit into an equal superposition of ket0 and ket1. So if you want to have a, a mixed qubit and to compute on both values of the bit, you simply apply the H operator to the matrix you see. So it maps the basic states ket0 and ket1 to two superposition states with 50-50 weights of the continual basis ket0 and ket1. So with this gate, we'll be able to compute in parallel uh, with several values of the bits. Another useful, and this is the, probably the second or the third most useful gate, is the C0 gate. The C0 gate will be a controlled knot gate, that is to say, uh, a test and a knot. If it takes two qubits as input, and if the first qubit is true, it will negate the second one, and only in this case. So the matrix is a 4 by 4 one. The swap gate, which will simply swap two qubits. So this one is easy. 
and the phase shift gates that will uh, only change the phase of the uh, qubit wave. Uh, this is a way also to mix the, the qubit state. And last one is the Toffoli gate, which is a big one. It's a controlled, controlled not gate. That is to say, it will flip the third qubit if the, both the, the first two are true. And we call a set of, of gates, sorry, we call a set of quantum gates universal if they can um, make any uh, classical logic operation only with this set of gates. For example, you can make any uh, classic gate of electronic gate and Boolean gate with only Toffoli gate. So this one is universal by itself. With only Toffoli gate, you can make any uh, operation you want in the classic world. Or you can uh, take a mix of Adamar gate, phase shift gate, and control in that gate. This is uh, another alternative. So what are the challenges uh, to design a quantum circuit? First challenge is uh, qubits and qubit resistor cannot be copied in any way because of the no cloning theorem. So you cannot copy uh, a variable or a resistor. <coughs> That's a, a big, uh, big issue. In simulation, like in reality, of course, the number of fused qubits are limited. So you must uh, have qubits you reuse for complex circuits. And it's very complicated to shift qubit registers. So instead of shifting qubit registers, that will deal with many, many operations, better is to shift the reading head of the gates. So we will move the gates around the circuit. This will uh, be far more easier than shifting the qubit itself. And in reality, you will have to use quantum error codes to avoid partial decoherence during the computation. Right? So fundamental quantum algorithms. Another uh, the first interesting uh, algorithm in the quantum world is the Grover's algorithm. algorithm sorry. Uh, it will uh, perform a search among n different values that are unsorted only in the square root of n operations. So this is a very uh, fast way to search around mixed data very efficiently, and this is probabilistic, iterating, but optimal algorithm that now doesn't exist in any more efficient algorithm in the quantum. This is the best part algorithm you can find. Second one is quantum Fourier transform, which is the uh, quantum equivalent of the discrete Fourier transform you can find in the classic world. And it will find periods in the input superposition and it, uh, it works in polynomial time, so very fast also. So algorithm is short algorithm, you probably have heard of, uh, which is a, a pure uh, quantum algorithm that works also in polynomial time. And it will uh, find the period of the sequence a to the k power, and uh, be able to find non-trivial square roots mod n, and, uh, a given integer. Uh, it will use quantum Fourier transform and some steps will be performed on a classical computer in this case. So what are the consequences for cryptography? Most asymmetric crypto systems rely on the integer factorization difficulty. Shor's algorithm is able to factor integers efficiently and similar algorithm exists for solving uh, discrete logarithms. So many, many systems are uh, threatened, like RSA or the Feldman key exchange. <laughs> As a consequence, uh, HTTPS, SSL, SSH, and VPN certificate security are, are seriously threatened. If, you, if we can scale enough the, con the quantum computer we, we're going to use. Okay. What are the, the records for factorization? For LSA factorization, the actual record, of, uh, the current record, sorry, is uh, 21, that was in October 2012, on a uh, real quantum computer. And uh, another record is 143, uh, April of the same year, that was made on adiabatic quantum computer. 
we'll see uh, the difference between the two in the next uh, topic. So this, this was about uh, breaking asymmetric cryptography. So what about symmetric cryptography now? It is possible to test multiple symmetric keys with a quantum algorithm. More precisely, uh, using the Grover algorithm, you will be able to test among n keys only uh, using square root of n steps. So this divides at least all current keylet strings by two. That means uh, AES 128 is only 64 bit string with this kind of algorithm. So this is a, a little bit weak for now. The new uh, ASX challenge will become this one. So this is a screenshot from Twitter from uh, Daniel Bernstein who has made a, a bet with uh, Antoine Joux, another cryptographer, and the bet a bottle of whiskey about the, the fate of uh, the next, next, after the next RSA uh, to see if it will be broken using a classical system or quantum system. And they, they don't agree on that. Uh, so let's have more practice. So see how you can simulate and uh, program quantum algorithms. So first, uh, first very simple uh, simulation tool is on uh, your Android phone. It's called Quantum Circuit, Circuit Simulator. It's very simple. You have some gates, and you can uh, just uh, drag and drop the gates on the workspace and choose how much qubit you want to use. So in this example, uh, I do uh, Adama transform on the first qubit and then I apply a CNOT gate on both qubits. And this is exactly what the, uh, this is exactly that was used to untangle uh, two photons uh, recently in Geneva. So you see this way, the first qubit will be in a messed state, so both 0 and 1. And this phase will negate the second one. So if the first is true, the second will become true. And if the first is false, the second one will become false. But they are not determined. That means they are both in a mixed position. And when you, you measure one, the other one will be fixed instantly in the same state. So you will either measure both at the zero states or at the one states. And the interaction will be instant at least faster than 10,000 times the speed of light. This was the very short experiment. And you see the results on, on the right. Another uh, framework you can use uh, uh, is QCL. It's a full framework uh, that you can program with, the programming language. And on the screenshot, you can see Shor's algorithm running. And just uh, factoring. 77 here. <coughs> it's, uh, it's an open source tool. Fine. Another uh, interesting tool is uh, Simpy with the package uh, physics quantum. So here you see a simple qubit adder with a Toffoli and a CNOT gate. This way you can simply add uh, two uh, numbers and have the result in a third qubit and measure all the results at the same time, for instance. And I have made a small demo designing a full uh, CRC8 hash. So this is the IPython notebook with, uh, with simply. And yeah, basics is uh, as the CRC is a, is a bit complicated because it deals with many shifts, adds, and so on, it's better not to shift qubit register, but to shift the, the, the gate uh, reading heads and to shift their action on the qubit. This will do exactly the same as shifting the, the qubit themselves. And you can see here, you have a full CRC8 using only C0 gate using 24 CNOT gates and uh, 16 input qubits, you will be able to uh, compute a CRC8. 
So this is uh, this R check that the results are correct for some numerical values. And we can compute all the results of the CRC at the same time and have the superposition of the results and find the results in the in the, in the world superposition. Or on the contrary, as the gates are reversible, we can fix an output of the CRC and find the, the input uh, very simply using just quantum computing. You have all the possible states at the end with uh, equal probabilities. <coughs> right? So. so this is the circuit. Another one is Q, uh, a quantum computing playground. So you see a quantum Fourier transform here. It's a web tool uh, in 3D. And you have another one which is very looks very like uh, QCS on Android, but it's a web uh, framework where you can import or export your own circuits and uh, run them. Another way to do a quantum adder with only three CNOT gates, and you have the result on the right. It's a free tool. You have the source code if you want to install it on your web server. So part <laughs> six is adiabatic quantum computers. So adiabatic quantum computers are the first kind of computer you can find. And this was one of the very first, actually, um, made by D-Wave, the Canadian quantum computing companies. They have built some controversial quantum computers, D-Wave 1 and D-Wave 2, and they have sold them, one of, uh, two of them, to uh, Google and uh, Lockheed Martin. And they plan to double their qubit capacity every year. Right. This is the chip. So it's a 2,000 qubit chip. So that's uh, quite a, a big capacity. But the problem, it's not a universal quantum computer. It only uh, deals with some kind of problems. So far, this is a probabilistic iterating and convergence system. A quantum state will represent the solution of the problem, and an ordinary computer will measure cycle by cycle one solution and will influence the uh, temperature of the system uh, in order to have a thermal equilibrium and to have uh, the solution of uh, Boltzmann probability distribution. The formulas are here. And I was able to uh, simulate this kind of computer because I didn't have access. There are they have closed all their assets. But I was able to uh, make my own framework using these rules and to factor uh, RSA number that is uh, more than 1 million, so this, this is 21 bits more than the current record, in one minute. So that's not a very big number, but it's better than what we can do at the moment. There is no noise on simulation, so that's why I can go further. But the current limitations are uh, limitations to optimization problems with problems uh, with sol problems with solutions you can rank properly, and it's better when the generating function of your problem is, is everywhere continuous, in my opinion. So it's not for a discrete, completely discrete problems. It works better with uh, continuous functions. You want to optimize like finding a minimum or maximum of a complex function. In conclusion, they are very specific and they need to be more peer reviewed and tested because they have closed all the, the things and they don't want their shot to study the, the computer. So, better is to deal with uh, real quantum computers. And it's, it exists, in fact. I will show you how to compute on a real quantum computer. There is a project called Quantum on the Cloud from uh, University of Bristol, Center for Quantum Photonics. And they have a fuel, universal quantum computer. They give remote access over JSON and HTTP. Uh, you just have to write uh, an explanation of what you're going to do on the system. And they have a simulator if you want to experiment uh, on the simulator before running the computation. So this is the, uh, the chip, the actual chip, you see. It's in a rectangle, a big rectangle. It's, it works with photons, so it's an optoelectronic chip. So this is the way to understand the chip. You have input pass, photon input pass, where, where you will put photon. You have photon output pass, where you will measure photons. You have beam splitters, that, are, that is to say uh, mirrors, that let the, the light pass half the time in the mirror. 
And they have a photon phase changer where you, where you can tune or finely tune the, the phase of the photon you see from uh, zero to two times high radius. In fact, it's a small heater in the optical fiber that change the speed of light in the fiber, to change the, the phase. So in classical interference, if you uh, try uh, to have only one photon in two uh, fibers with a beam splitter, half the time you will weather the photon in the, the first receiver, half the time in the second one, because it's half the probability for uh, each part of the mirror. Okay? So this is classical. In, uh, in the case you have two photons, two input photons, either you are in classical situation or in quantum situation, you will, uh, uh, no, first you, in classical situation, uh, both photons will behave independently, so you, if we have a uh, 50% chance that you measure one photon on the, the zero receiver, the first receiver, on the second one also, but they behave independently, so at the, at the end, you have half the probability to measure in every detector a click by a photon. So this is the classical interference. But in quantum interference, the photons will agree on their fate, and they will both hit the same receiver. They won't choose independently their fate. So if you try to emit two photons, they will choose the same receiver. You won't know in advance which one, but they will choose the same. This is purely quantum uh, mechanical effect. Can be measured. So the full ship uh, has uh, six injection paths and 13 uh, beam splitter and eight uh, tunes for, for phase. And you must uh, make a post-selection step just after uh, the simulation to uh, have the real probabilities because you will see complex probabilities at the end that is to say outcomes that cannot uh, be possible so you have to post-select uh, the experiments I will explain that in the demo but first before the demo uh, you have to understand this, those two tables so we have computed the set of possible paths for uh, some 1 qubit and 2 qubit gates. So if you want to do, for example, a, a NOT gate, uh, you will have uh, a photon in input pass 3 if you want to code for a 0 bit, or a photon in pass, in pass 4 if you want to code a 1 bit. And this is the same uh, for 2 qubit photons. Uh, 2 qubit gates, sorry. So let's have a demo, it will be easier to show you on a real demo. So first with a NOT case. So this is the real design of the, of the chip. Oh, sorry, I missed something. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I plan to do a demo on the real hardware, so I asked for a token, another token, because I used to work on this uh, quantum chip. But unfortunately, they are working on the chip and they are operative until the end of November. So the, the demo will be live, but on the on a simulator, not on the real hardware. But you, you will be able by yourself to ask for a token next month and try it by yourself on the real hardware. So this is yeah the real chip on the simulator for first design uh, uh, not gate. So not gate is a gate where you will put a photon in pass 3 if you want to mean a 0 bit and in pass 4 if you want to mean a 1 bit so we try to negate a 1 qubit so we select the input pass 4 and you see you have different outcomes so one third of the time you will measure the photon in output pass 1 one third in output pass 3 and one third in output pass 5 but 1 and 5 doesn't mean anything because we have chosen input paths 3 and 4, remember. So we have to cancel this outcome because there are only uh, complex probabilities and not real ones. So the only remaining will be outcome 3 and you will see that input pass 4 becomes output pass 3 so in, uh, bit 1 will become bit 0. And it's the same if you do the contrary. So if you try to not 
the bit zero, you will see the only outcome that will, uh, won't be cancelled is out, uh, outcome four. So not of zero is one and not of one is zero. So this is very simple. <coughs> So next step is swap gates. If you want to swap two qubits, uh, remember the tables. First qubit will be on uh, input pass 0 and 3. So we'll choose, for instance, 0. Second qubit will be on input pass 2 and 4. So for instance, we'll choose input pass 4. And we'll have a lot of outcomes. And the only outcome which, which is possible for our chosen input pass is this one. So you will see that we have swapped uh, our input pass because we have chosen 0 and 1 and the result is 1 and 0. Right? This is, if you have the slides, uh, this is the second the slide here. Yeah. The swap gate. And third demo is the more complicated. It's a quantum adder with a mixed qubit, so we'll do uh, many additions at the same time. So a qubit adder can be made with a C0 gate, with input pass 1 and 2 for the first qubit, 3 and 4 for the second one. So if you want to add, for instance, bit 1 plus uh, bit 1, this will be the two input pass, and you will have the result. But this is more interesting to mix first photon, so we will change the phase in order to mix first photon and have an addition of a mixed qubit and a fixed one. So the first one will be a superposition of 0 and 1, and the second one will be 1. And you will see the different outcomes. The outcomes that are possible are 1 and 4 for our input pass. And the second one is 2 and 3. And it exactly gives the two solutions uh, 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 0. And the caribit is dropped because of the hardware capacity. Now we don't have the caribit uh, stored anywhere in this case. So we have made many additions at the same time. And a quote uh, to sum up the, the demonstrations. If quantum mechanism are in profoundly shocked, you haven't understood it yet. This is the quote from Niels Bohr. For the physician. So, what we can we talk about? Uh, what can we say about the future of cryptography? Uh, there are six different main approaches um, to replace uh, actual cryptography algorithms, like lattice-based, multivariate, hash-based, code-based, super-singular, or symmetric key quantum resistance. Because the, the, the easiest we can do is double the key size. Uh, this is the easiest we can do for symmetric algorithm. But we you have to, to change all asymmetric algorithm and find equivalents that are uh, not weakened by uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, computers. Okay? And there is even uh, an annual event about post-quantum cryptography, which is called the, the PQ Crypto Conference. And this is the sixth edition this year. So you can attend this conference if you are interested in quantum resistant cryptography. Thank you for your attention. I hope this was interesting for you. I'm still available for questions at the end of the talk. And a big huge thanks to the staff for all the, the organization. Thank you.
So at this time you have uh, quantum computers, I mean real ones, not, not adiabatic ones. Adiabatic is like uh, 2,000 qubits, but you cannot do anything anymore. If you want a universal computer, you need to have uh, like 100 or 200 qubits to do interesting things. And at the moment, you have only uh, 15 qubits in uh, the better uh, quantum computers, I mean universal ones. Uh, and the third point is improving quantum error code correction because there are a lot of noise in your system and it's very uh, difficult to isolate the, the computer system from the, the environment. So you have to add additional qubits for quantum error protection. <coughs> but nothing uh, prevents us to increase the, the scalability of this computer. So in, it will happen between 10 and 25 years, I think, using uh, small uh, approximations. Uh, but in the, in the beginning, we will be able to break symmetry crypto systems like ASH or AES-128, and later we'll be able to break it, like in 25 or 30 years, we will be able to break RSA, for instance. But the first, uh, the first records will probably be on symmetric crypto system because they require a lot of less uh, 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 qubit capacity to, to deal with. So with only uh, 100 or 200 qubits, you can break, for example, reverse a hash, like SHA-1, so you can break uh, authentication systems, you can break certificates and that kind of thing. And RSA will be uh, more far in the time, like 25 or something, that's probably. But you can have a, a test by yourself on a quantum on the, on the cloud project. You can test for now on the simulator and you can ask a one hour token to do computation on the ship. You just have to write a small explanation about what, what you want to do on the quantum ship and they give tokens for free. And you can uh, try a small, uh, small circuits with up to four photons. Uh, that is more or less three, four uh, gates on the circuit and have your own experiment running. And if you want to have bigger circuits, you, you have to fit at simulation uh, tools for now. Let's hope uh, nobody's going to design a black hole uh, with a quantum computer. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Or? Okay, so thank you. We have a, uh, it's